directly due east of Whiterun. Just down the road from Valtheim Towers lies the settlement of Fleetford. Greetings, my friends. I am Kolar the Unkilled, and I'm going to show you around Fleetford a bit, as it is my favorite settlement mod. And while I'm doing so, without spoiling everything about this place, I will show off some other mods as well. So let us start right here at the Honey Drum Lodge. Within we find a usable kitchen and dining area. Usable weapon racks a rather unique alchemy table, complete with storage, and a mannequin. From here, one either can move down or up. So let us now proceed to the loft. If you're like me, and enjoy displaying the weapons and shields you find on random adventures, you'll find this room serves that purpose well, without being oversized. Every weapon shown in this room is from Truly Unique Weapons by Gog Sinixer 7 and Krypton. So big thumb out to them for this truly essential mod. In a forthcoming video, I'll highlight this mod specifically taking a much closer look, with better lighting, at the detail and thought that has gone into each one. And here, unlike hearthfire cases, these display cases allow for the precise placement of weapons. Just like a weapon rack. Now, I also tend to collect books, yet rarely have I come upon such a superb place to display them. Static bug jars add to the eccentricity of the place, and as you can see, I have some room left over, for even this functions as a bookshelf. And yet, there's a secret here, a secret compartment for the warship of in this case, Talos. But perhaps you prefer Nocturnal. The choice is yours, as this is one of several customizable aspects of Fleetford. Speaking of eccentricity, here are two mods which complement each other very well, especially in alchemy shops and necromancer dens. Improved Fiery Fire Salts, Frosty Frost Salts, and Glowing Glow Dust, ported by Divine Dibella. I have the impression these effects should have been present in the base game, instantly noticeable upon entering any room. The same can be said for Awesome Potions, ported by Tarshana. The examples here are but a small fraction of what can be found in the world, and are simply what I happen to have on me at the time. But all potions found in the world are replaced by this mod, and virtually every single one of them has some kind of movement taking place within the vials, lending to a truly magical feel. So thumouts to Divine Dibella and Tarshana for those ports. And now that we have seen the entirety of the loft, let us proceed directly to the cellar. The cellar comes fully stocked with beverages of various quality. No ale, sadly, though I do enjoy a good mead especially during the heart of winter. Opposite the mead, we find the Jehana Ancestral Items, if you so choose, 
as their presence is entirely optional. The ancestral sword resembles an unenchanted dawnbreaker, whereas the ancestral armor resembles ebony mail. It is heavy armor. I'm wearing it now. Confirming the items do respawn. This next room is appealing in a simple yet dark sort of way. The ambiance will speak for itself. A forgotten mannequin lurks in the corner next to a coffin, suitable for storage, yet not for sleeping. Ample storage provided for soul gems filled and unfilled to conduct one's enchanting upon a surface alike the Eye of Magnus. Just who was the cat that built and furnished this place? Finally, we have the forge, and by now it should be abundantly clear. Fleetford's designer had an affinity for Dwimmer technology. Everything one would need is here, including an abundance of storage, some basic raw materials for smelting, and the obligatory mannequin. Upon this cleverly positioned weapon rack, I have arrayed some of the weapons from the mod Thane Weapons Reborn by Ice Cream Assassin, ported by Hari Honey. I have always felt that Thane Weapons should be unique. This mod grants that reality with exquisite attention to detail. And that, my friends, concludes our tour of the Honey Drum Lodge. Just across the way, we have the Blue Moonstone, Blacksmith and Armory. A quick look inside is warranted. As you can see, the place is well stocked. And Miarin here, the establishment's owner, is willing to go on adventures with you. One need but ask. Behind the lodge is a general store called Ajax Emporium. And it is here that one must ultimately purchase the Honey Drum Loft and Cellar. From Ajax himself. An eccentric fellow is Ajax, like most who call Fleetford their home. He will also sell you the key to Atien's workshop. And Atien's workshop is where all the customization is implemented. You may select one of the eight divines to enshrine in your loft, along with a secret shrine of Nocturnal or Talos, and an alchemy or enchanting table. Choose your own guard faction and banner. Opt in for the aforementioned Jehana ancestral items, and your own horse of a different color. Any choice, once made in the workshop, is permanent. For the magically inclined, be sure to visit and befriend the hermit. This cantankerous old Nord hermit is more powerful than any court wizard in Skyrim. I wonder what his life entailed before he settled in Fleetford. You'll also meet Kasha and Roxa, both merchants, and their saber-cat acquaintance, Makashka, who simply stands guard. Kasha is a sneak trainer, and Roxa is an able follower.
who dual wields. The mysterious ATN left personal notes of goodbye for many of Fleetford's residents. You may discover them and read them and draw your own conclusions regarding who he is and where he may have gone. As I alluded to earlier, I've always pictured him as Khajiit, though my recent research renders that conclusion unlikely. In the end, his race matters not. In Fleetford we have the successful marriage of fourth era Nordic design, complemented by long forgotten Dwimmer tech. Situated at a bend in the road alongside the White River, right where a settlement just ought to be. I remain Kolar the Unkilled, and I thank you for watching.